Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan uh, salam sejahtera. Selamat datang ke sesi research webinar pada pagi ini. Um, sebelum tu Dr. Hanis dah ada ke? Ada ada. Ada ada. <coughs> Dr. Hanis. Ya yeah, ya yeah, saya ada. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Nizatun? Saya ada. Uh, okay. okay Hello. Uh, uh. Kejap lagi saya punya speaker ni buat hal sekejap. Hello Nani. Hello Dr. Hani. Hello Dr. Nizatun. Assalamualaikum. Dengar tak? Waalaikumsalam Dr. Min, dengar. Dengar eh. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum, selamat pagi. Uh, welcome to this webinar series. Uh, we will wait for the secretariat. Yeah? Uh, secretariat will do some opening and then we uh, pass it to Dr. Mizatun to uh, do an opening speech and to introduce the speaker and then uh, we will invite Dr. Han Hanis Hanim to start the talk. Okay. Yang berusaha Profesor Mahathir Dr. Sharifah Aminah Syed Muhammad, pengarah Komiti Pendidikan Kor Pejabat TNCPI yang uh, berusaha Dr. Uh, Mizatun, uh, TDPGI uh, Fakulti Farmasi uh, yang berusaha juga Dr. Hanis, uh, penceramah kita pada pagi ini uh, seterusnya para hadirin yang saya hormati sekalian. Terlebih dahulu, Pejabat TNCPI mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih atas kesudian para hadirin untuk menyertai program ini pada pagi ini. Uh, bagi meneruskan program, saya menjemput yang berusaha Dr. Mizatun untuk memberi sedikit uh, kata aluan pada hari ini. Dengan segala hormatnya dipersilakan. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera semua. Um, Assalamualaikum Selamat sejahtera Dr. Mijatun okay, Terima kasih kerana Sudi menjemput um, Kami dari Fakulti Farmasi Untuk terus serta dalam webinar NCBI ni Sebelum tu uh, introduction untuk Dr. Hanis ya, Dalam bahasa Inggeris boleh ya Dr. Boleh boleh ya yeah. okay. uh, It is an honor for me to introduce Dr. Hanis Hanum Zutifri From the Department of Pharmacy Practice Fakulti of Pharmacy UITM she graduated in 2007 from mm. our faculty with Bachelor of Pharmacy with Honours, the second batch of alumni. Our Adi. She mm -hmm. had a Master's in Clinical Pharmacy from University of Queensland, Australia and just came back early last year with a PhD in Cardiovascular Medicine from University of Birmingham, United Kingdom. For the past few weeks with the COVID-19 pandemic, frontliners have been working hard to flatten the curve. However, people only notice the roles of medical doctors, nurses, lab technicians, police, army, and not forgotten the e-hailing riders. Okay? But we forgot there are many behind the scenes, for example, the pharmacies. Although I'm not one, but I'm proud to have taught them to be a healthcare professional. Without further ado, I think we should actually invite Dr. Hanis uh, to talk about the roles of pharmacists during the COVID-19 and I hope that it will be a fruitful uh, webinar. Thank you. Terima kasih kepada PM Dr. Mizatun atas kata aluan sebentar tadi. Baiklah, maju diteruskan dengan uh, menjemput Dr. Hanis Hanum untuk memberikan uh, ceramah pada pagi ini dengan segala hormatnya dipersilakan. Right. Uh, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning. Can everybody see the screen? Uh, not here, Dr. Hanis. Okay. That's fine. I think it's taking some time to All right. to load.
Now is okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's okay, okay now. Yes. Now is okay. All yes. right. All right. So again, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. Um, my name is Anis and I'm from the Faculty of Pharmacy. So before I start off uh, my talk today, um, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me a chance to speak about our roles of a pharmacist in COVID-19 pandemic. And also thank you very much for your kind introduction, uh, Dr. Niza. So this is the outline of my presentation today. Okay, as an introduction, let's kick start with some of the statistics of what's happening in terms of uh, COVID-19 in Malaysia. So as of yesterday, on the 28th of April, um, our total confirmed case, cases in Malaysia is about 5,851, with um, 1,792 total active, active cases. And as of yesterday, we only have 31 new cases. And the total recovered case is 69% as compared to the total active case, which is less, a lot lesser, which is 29%. And the mortality rate um, for uh, patients in Malaysia is very low at about 1.7%. So as our DG has mentioned in his uh, press conference yesterday, we have actually um, su successfully uh, flattened the curve the curve that everybody is afraid of. So we're actually seeing fewer cases, uh, fewer positive cases throughout the days. So this is an achievement um, being made by the Ministry of Health, Health and also the frontliners. Also, you can see the top graph here is the, the blue line, but the, the number of discharges and the yellow line are the active cases. So starting from 13 or 14 April, you can see that there's more discharge as compared to new cases, which shows that we're doing a good job, meaning patients are getting more better instead of us getting new cases. And, you, and as you can see, the number of deaths is quite constant from the beginning and until the end, showing that we have a mortality rate of 1.7% sorry, as compared to the other parts of the world. So some facts on COVID-19 death in Malaysia. So this fact is obtained um, from 14th of April uh, based on 82 death. I didn't manage to get the latest update on the 100, 100 uh, number of patients of death yesterday, but this is um, all that I've obtained. So among 82 death, almost all of them are men, 75%. And more than 30% were from the street battalion gathering. Um, more than half of them were age. And this represent the high risk group of patients. So they have pre-existing conditions like diabetes and hypertension to patients without the pre-existing health problem. So this is where we, we need to target um, in terms of treatment, in terms of preventing the disease, because we some kind we some sort of have an idea of the high risk group and what we should do to, act to prevent further infection in this um, group. Now, looking at the worldwide, the WHO has um, predicted uh, a mortality rate of uh, of two percent um, early of March. However. Uh, the, the mortality rate is a lot higher, 3.4%, and this is, this is alarming. So that's why all around the world, people are taking um, very um, precautious measures to prevent this rate from becoming higher. Now, at the right-hand side of the slide, looking at the death rate, which is varies by age, health condition, and sex. And I gathered this information from the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention. As you can see, majority of patients who died were above 60, and most of them are pronounced um, among those 80 plus. And majority also had um, pre-existing conditions such as respiratory disease, diabetes, cardiovascular medicine, and more male died because of COVID-19. So this statistic, our, our data represents what the data from the Chinese uh, cohort looks like. So again, uh, I would like to highlight that we have to target patients who are elderly, patients with um, chronic conditions like um, 
um, diabetes and um, cardiovascular diseases and, and male. So um, let's look at the movement control order and it, its impact to patient. So I've been um, getting some feedbacks from patients that they say they have difficulties in getting supply of medication. Yeah, they are too scared to go to the hospital. One, because they don't want to get infected. Two, because of the movement control order. So they don't know how to get the, their supply of medication. Okay, And sometimes they don't even want to seek medical attention when they're sick. And lastly, they don't want to attend their regular follow-up. So where do we pharmacists play our role in terms of um, addressing all this need? So how, how to obtain repeated medication? So there are various ways that patients can obtain their repeated medication. We have this value-added services, VAS, by the KKM pharmacies. And even the Ministry of Health has um, recommended uh, patient to use one of the services. One of it is called Ubat Mulayu e post whereby you don't have to go to the pharmacy to get to the hospital to get the, the medication. Instead, this medication can be posted for you. And the cost of the postage will be um, subsidized by the government as long as the PKP period is ongoing. So it's easy. So if you have any medication that is finishing, especially your tablets and a capsule, all you need to do is um, call your pharmacy and then ask them whether they provide or not these kind of services. And if they do, just let them know that you would like these services and you would like your medication to be posted. So it's, it's a very good initiative. Um, to address the issues of uh, getting uh, medication, repeated medication. Now, if you have medication other than tablet or capsule, it cannot be posted because, um, for example, uh, your liquid medication and medication that requires um, certain temperatures to be stored like your injectables and your insulin. So this can't be posted. So what can you do? You can, you can um, use other services that is provided by the KKM pharmacies, like the one shown in the left side of the slide. You can either set um, an appointment date with the pharmacies, you can call them or text them and tell them that you want to collect your medicine, for example, today at two o'clock. So they will prepare your medication. All you need to do is just um, go there and take it so you don't have to wait for a long time. If you don't want to do that, there is another service called Pharmacy Pandulaju or um, uh, like like the one that you always do if you want to take out take away MacDizon or KFC. So again, it's it's very convenient. Even if you don't want to go out uh, and go inside the hospital, all you need to do is call the pharmacy, let them know that you want to collect your medication using this service, Pharmacy Pandulaju, and they will prepare for it. And all you need to do is just collect it. Okay. Uh, and the fourth service is called Locker for You. Again, um, call the pharmacy and ask them if, you, if they have these services and then uh, they will prepare your medication and put it inside the locker and you can just go and take your medication. So instead of waiting, you don't have to wait, the medication is all ready for you. And lastly is this um, call, system called System Pendispensan Ubat Bersepadu, SPUB, whereby you can collect your medication at your facility that is suitable for you. For example, this is in the case like uh, you live in Shah Alam, but you have an appointment in Hospital Kuala Lumpur, HKL. So it's quite a distance. And with this PKP period, it's hard for you to get your medication, right? So all you need to do is let the pharmacist at HKL, the, the original hospital, know that you want your medication to be um, supplied by hospital Sha'alam pharmacies. So they will prepare all the necessary actions and then um, you can just collect them at uh, hospital Sha'alam, for example. So this is um, uh, some information about the various services and the various um, 
clinic kesihatan and hospital that provide these services. So you can actually obtain all this information from the Duta Kenali Ubat Anda. It's a web, it's a Facebook page. So it, it contains a lot of information regarding all these value-added services provided by the pharmacy. For example, this is um, the services provided by um, Jabatan Kesihatan Wilayah, Wilayah Persekutuan Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya. So for pharmacy Pandulaju, um, the hospital that offer this kind of services is Hospital Putrajaya, Klinik Kesihatan Putrajaya. So there are the numbers here. You can just call them and let them know that you want this type of services. Okay, like this Medibox, the second example, is also uh, also known as the locker for you. It's also available in Hospital Prajaya, Klinik Kesehatan Kuala Lumpur. And again, all you need to do is call them. And Ubat Melalui Ipos is available in all of these hospitals listed at the left side of the slide. So for more information, to see whether your hospital or your Klinik Kesehatan offer this type of services, you can um, um, get this information from this Facebook page, Duta Kenali Ubat Anda, or you can call them straight away. So, how do you do that? In this uh, Facebook page, they have um, shown what are the steps that you need to do um, to, to obtain your medication. Okay, so first of all, you have to check whether your medicine is sufficient or not at home. Okay, during this PKP period. So if it's sufficient, you don't have to you don't have to worry. But if it's almost empty, it's almost finished, you can use one of these services. Okay, so when you choose, uh, for example, uh, Ubat Melalui Ipo service, you need to let the pharmacies know because some of the hospital, they don't operate, um, they don't have a fully IT system, meaning they don't have a record of what the medication that the patient take because uh, the, the record is, is held by the patient. So the only way they know what the patient is taking is when the patient show them the prescription. So because of the P PKP period, all you need to do is take a picture of your of the slip of your prescription the front page like i've sh shown here at the left side of the slide the front page of the prescription and the back page of the prescription okay take a picture of these two prescription and then um with those pictures please uh, insert your name your ic your phone number your date of appointment and your address where where the medication needs to be posted and then you email to this email address for example um for example hello can you hear me hello holy doctor oh, okay right uh, yes we can hear you doctor okay. Uh -huh. oh okay right so where was i okay I was at this emailing part, yeah? Okay, all you need to do is uh, email um, the hospital with the, um, with the title UNP and then the name of your clinic, the clinic that you want to collect your medication and the name of, of the patient. So as soon as the pharmacy department receive this email, they can start processing uh, for the Ubat Mulayu Ipos. And again, all of this, um, the cost of postage will be subsidized by uh, Ministry of Health as long as the PKP period, yeah? Okay, so that, that covers the part where the patient is too scared to, to get their medication from hospital, okay? What about they're too scared to seek medical attention when they're sick? Okay, so there's this um, website called doctoroncall.com. So if you're worried, so if you're worried about um, going to the hospital because of the, if you think that you have signs and symptoms of COVID-19, you can uh, go to this website and um, ask some information from the doctors. You can either chat, in, chat with them or have a forum and ask anything uh, about your diseases. However, this platform is not for emergency cases. If you have chest pain or other type of um, serious illness, illnesses, um, straight away call 999 or straight away head to the hospital. Don't, don't be afraid um, of um, getting COVID-19. If you have an emergency situation, straight away head to the hospital. Okay. 
The Ministry of Health also come up with this questionnaire. Adakah anda berisiko menghadapi jangkitan novel coronavirus? Again, if you're scared, just try to answer the questionnaire, and they will um, they will give you some uh, some feedbacks on whether what you should do, whether you have you are at risk or not, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is the questionnaire that you can get. Now, uh, they also have this My Sejahtera app on the App Store that you can download. If you don't want to go to the various website, you can download this app and assess all the COVID-19 uh, information, all the guidelines and so on and so, so forth in this uh, app. Right, so patients are too scared to attend follow-up. What should they do? Always remind patient to call their clinic at the respective hospital to confirm regarding follow-up, whether the follow-up is uh, as usual or whether it's postponed or cancelled. So this is very important, particularly in patients receiving chemotherapy. They, they should not uh, miss their appointment just because they're scared. So always call uh, the respective clinics and make sure where your appointment is, whether it's at the same hospital or whether it's transferred to other non-COVID centres. Right, so uh, moving on to our role as a pharmacist. Okay, so I've spoken about some of the uh, value added services. So, uh, now, looking at some guidance by the Malaysian Pharmaceutical Society, they have come up with a slogan prepare, prevent, and manage. Okay, in this COVID 19 pandemic, we have to prepare ourselves to combat the outbreak. So, how do we do that? First of all, we have to stay informed and up to date about the local COVID 19 situation. And then we have to establish relationship with uh, key healthcare providers um, to make sure the latest treatment being used in the public sectors. And then we have to prepare our staff for emergency situation like uh, a shortage of staff and so on and so forth. Of course, we have to also provide education to everybody involved, whether to patient, to our family members, to everybody, provide the correct information. Okay, uh, prevent infection. We must always uh, remind our patient, especially those who come to collect the medication, to always sanitize their hand and keep one meter distance and so on and so forth. And lastly, we have to manage supply because in this demanding period, a lot of people are demanding all sorts of medication. So we must make sure that the medication is uh, sufficient to meet the demand. Yes. Yes. Tak keluar. Ha ah. Uh -uh. <coughs> Jap eh. Saya escape balik. Nampak tak? Belum doktor. Cuma doktor tekan present apa yang semula. <coughs> Dah. Dah tekan. Mungkin dia lambat sikit kot nak loading. Ah. Okay, dah ada dah. Right. So, I think I'm done with managing supply. Okay. So, moving on to other roles. Um, okay, because pharmacies are um, also involved, uh, we are considered as front, car, front care li front liners. Okay. So, because we, um, we give medicine to patients. So, we are also involved in uh, setting up the pharmacy services at the MAP Center. As you all know, this center is being used to um, for quarantine patient and for low risk patient. So wherever there are patient, there must be a pharmacy services set up at that place. So um, there is a group of pharmacists that is involved in setting up the service and running the service as long as the MAP Center is running. 
A. Some of the uh, pharmacists are also involved in voluntary works, uh, making sure that uh, patients at their local settings have sufficient uh, uh, amount of uh, food, uh, medication, um, supplies. Yeah, we're also doing that. And then in terms of the community pharmacies, they are also doing postage of uh, medicine or other needs of patient. So for example, if they have a regular customer, the customer can call the, the pharmacist and let them know that um, they require this medication, that medication, and it can be posted as well. And they also offer telecounseling services as well. If the patient have any problems or any um, questions, they can just call their community pharmacist and uh, get the required information. Okay, that's our role in, in Malaysia. What about the role of pharmacies in the overseas setting? So, um, in the overseas setting, um, as you all know, there's lots of pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, Boringer, and, and these companies, in order for them to operate, they require a pharmacist to be, to be in there. So, for companies that produce, they are producing vaccines or other treatment for uh, COVID-19, we, we have to be, the pharmacist has to be there for the pharmaceutical company to operate their operation. Uh, in terms of hospital pharmacies, um, they're also involved in clinical trials for drugs to treat COVID-19. They are involved in recruiting patients, evaluating literature related to new or repurposed therapies, and um, they also ensure access to these therapies and other drugs on shortage due to pandemic. Uh, in New Zealand and Australia, they also issued out hotline numbers to encourage phone consultation and prescription orders for home supply to reduce public visits. And even in the USA, uh, from a tweet that I saw yesterday, the, the governor, New York governor, the, he said he will send an executive order allowing uh, independent pharmacies to conduct diagnostic coronavirus tests because their numbers are increasing every day and they don't want to burst their healthcare system. So um, they are trying to think of ways on how our pharmacists can help. And one of the ways is um, to uh, let the pharmacists conduct this diagnostic test. Of course, social distancing measures still apply. And of course, the pharmacists will have to be trained on how to manage uh, all these tests. Okay. And lastly, as researchers, we can conduct various types of studies because, um, as you all know, it's, it's a novel virus. So we need to learn more about the virus and how patients are responding to treatment. So that's where um, we play our role in, in this pandemic as well. So um, lastly, looking at some of the question and answers that I get uh, from patients. Okay, first of all, um, can I take high dose vitamin C to treat or prevent COVID-19? The answer is no, because um, taking vitamin C does not prevent or treat COVID-19. Um, so this taking vitamin C is for your over, overall health. It's not to treat or to prevent uh, from COVID-19. And taking excessive dose will cause uh, unnecessary side effect to patients. So if you hear a patient wanting to take vitamin, very high dose vitamin C to prevent or treat coronavirus, please, please make sure that they don't exceed the, um, uh, the maximum dose and they don't, they don't take it to treat or prevent. It's, it's for your general health, not to treat or prevent COVID-19. Uh, number two, can I take antibiotics if I think I'm infected with COVID-19? The answer is also no, because antibiotic is not used to treat COVID-19, but it is used to treat co-infection that happens to patients with COVID-19. So again, if you have patients requesting um, to buy antibiotics to prevent uh, COVID-19, you can't do that. And of course, we don't want to do that to prevent uh, from uh, um, uh, from overusage of antibiotics. And third, can I buy this medication called chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine to treat COVID-19? Now, the usage of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine, it requires uh, monitoring from the doctors, okay? You can only use this medication if you are under doctor's monitoring. So if you want to buy this, you can't, and it, it has to be monitored under the doctors you can't just buy it over the counter if for the purpose of treatment of COVID-19. 
question for do I need to spray my body with this disinfectant if I suspect that I have COVID-19? No, because spraying your body with uh, disinfectant will cause um, uh, uh, serious side effects. Okay? All you need to do is uh, maintain good, good hygiene, wash your hands with soap and water. Right, what are the current treatment being used to treat COVID-19 in Malaysia? At the moment, there is no specific treatment for COVID-19, um, even in the world or in Malaysia. But uh, this is what the doctors in uh, the Ministry of Health is using, this information. Uh, I get that from the Ministry of Health web um, website. So treatment depends on what stage the patient is on. So if the patient is at stage one, that means they have no symptom. So no treatment is required. Now, as they go on further down the stage, stage two and above, then doctors will start um, giving treatment according to the different stages of the disease. For example, if you're at stage two, you are symptomatic, but you don't have pneumonia. So the doctors will either give you hydroxychloroquine or if there's no hydroxychloroquine, they can be given chloroquine for five days and so on and so forth. So this is what they are doing at the moment in, in Malaysia. So next question, what is the next best hope in terms of medication? So there's this one drug called Remdesivir. It's an antiretroviral originally developed for Ebola and Mar Marburg virus. So it's currently undergoing clinical trial for the treatment of COVID-19. Fortunately, uh, Malaysia is one of the site um, for the clinical trial for this vaccine. So, um, sorry, for this drug. So let's see um, what are the outcomes obtained from the clinical trials. So question number seven, are all the claims regarding traditional medication true? Some of you might have heard, um, uh, especially in China's, uh, that they use uh, traditional medicine. Well, they can, they may provide comfort and elevate symptoms of COVID-19, but at the moment, there is no evidence that current medicine can prevent uh, or cure the disease. So they are also conducting trials um, in China uh, to see whether um, the effects of uh, traditional medication on uh, COVID-19. Um, I think this is the last question. Um, should I stop taking my medication to treat hypertension like Pendopil, Anerapil and Lursartan? Um, the answer is no. Please continue, continue taking medication. And this is what uh, has been uh, advised by the European Society of Cardiology because there were some um, rumours saying that this medication can worsen outcomes in patients with uh, COVID-19. But um, we don't have sufficient data to say so. So the ESC has come up with the guideline and saying that they have to continue taking this medication. So I think uh, that's all uh, for me. Thank you very much. <coughs> Terima kasih kepada Dr. Anis atas taklimat sebentar tadi. Uh, baiklah, majlis ini membuka sesi soal jawab uh, kepada semua para hadirin bagi menanyakan soalan berkenaan taklimat sebentar uh, berkenaan ceramah sebentar tadi. Para hadirin boleh uh, mutekan mikrofon untuk bertanya ataupun uh, chat di bahagian chatting di sebelah. Okay, thank you Dr. Ani. So now we open to question. Uh, anybody would like to pose any questions to Dr. Ani? To or you want to get further information on how you get your medication. If you have, have any problem to get your medication, then maybe we can um, discuss in this webinar. Hello? Hello? Ah, okay. Any question? Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Ah, ini. Ah, Tania. Tania, karena terlalu buat presentation tadi, 
Ya. Ha, hmm. Jadi kalau begitu caranya kita ambil ubat, apakah agak awak uh, sebagai farmasis dalam bidang uh, akademi ni boleh membantu dari segi uh, pemberian ubat ni agak-agaknya? Boleh beri sikit, tambahan sikit tak tentang peranan ahli akademik dalam uh, apa pemberian ubat pada pesakit masa COVID ni? Okay, so as uh, as we are not directly involved with the patient because we're academician, of course we can uh, we can spread this information uh, because not everybody knows where to get uh, appropriate and proper information. So we can spread this information to uh, patients, be it our family members or the community. We can we can let them know how they can obtain their medication uh, from the respective hospitals. Okay, so if patients are going are under follow up uh, from our hospital UITM, Sungai Buloh or Selayang, we also offer this um, ubat melalui post services. So. Any staff or any uh, family members who are under follow up of hospital UATM, they can also uh, get their medication through postage. So I think uh, information spreading ni, uh, information yang benar dan sahih ni sangat penting lah uh, bagi kita sebagai academician to make sure that patients get the correct information on how to obtain their medication. Okay. Keduanya, Anis. Ya, yeah, Prof. Adakah uh, servis penempatan diberi di hospital tadi itu meluputi semua swasta dan kerajaan? Uh, yang saya tahu, uh, kerajaan. Yang swasta saya tak, tak berapa pasti, Prof. Lepas tu yang kerajaan pun bukan semua hospital uh, provide semua value added services so bergantung kepada services yang mereka tawarkan. So pesakit memang kena telefon uh, uh, farmasi berkenaan dan tanyalah uh, apakah services yang mereka offer. In terms of private, uh, saya tak berapa pasti Prof. Tapi kalau community setting, uh, mereka buat jugalah uh, ubat melalui e-post. Cumanya kalau from community the patient has to pay for the postage. Uh, the government doesn't subsidize. Okay. okay. Thank you, Dr. John Shah Kong Hsu. He thanks Dr. Hadi for the presentation. Any more questions? So I I shared a little bit in the chat whereby I think this is the uh, about the Facebook page Duta Kenali Ubat Anda and then if you want to seek for medical advice we can go to Tanya Dr. Pakar isn't it uh, Dr. Hanis? Yes, yes. So yes. Tanya Dr. Pakar is it available online? You just google Tanya Dr. Pakar then the page will come out. Yes, the page will come out. Ah, so right. I had a look at this Tanya Dr. Pakar just now. It can be ah. asked uh, macam in a forum base ataupun ah, chat. Okay. Ataupun chat lah, ah. chat directly to the medical professional who are in charge. Yes, know? yes. Okay. Uh -huh. And I the doctors can... doctors kat situ semua uh, medically uh, certified by the apa ni, board of, uh, board of medical. medical, medical uh. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. I also, uh, yeah. Yang forum tu is free of charge. Kalau macam you have questions, any any questions and, and you post it in the forum, it's free of charge. But then kalau you not start texting them, they they charge um, five ringgit. And mm. if you want to call them, they charge uh, 20 ringgit per, per session. Oh, all right, all right. Mm. Mm. Per session means that uh, doesn't matter how long that you talk to the, pay, the, to the medical professional, they will charge you only 20 ringgit per call regardless of the duration, is it? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Alright, okay. Okay, doctor, I'm out and in again. So I can't view previous message anymore. Hopefully you could copy and paste again. Alright, okay. I will copy and paste later on. I also would like to highlight about the value added services by KKM. I think that is very useful because uh, my family members also involved. Uh, we have our, uh, my my mother and my sister also get the medication posted 
right to our doorstep. We don't have to go to the pharmacy to get the supply anymore. So I really hope those who are in this webinar, uh, hopefully you will benefit with this value added services as well, just like we experience it. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I think that's yeah. That's that's a very good initiative by the yeah. uh, pharmacy services um, uh, given to the community. Yeah, and then my friend also. Uh, he mentioned. She mentioned that he got the regular um regular. Uh, check up at hospital Seremban, but he lives somewhere in Kajang uh, because mm -hmm. especially the endocrinologist is only in hospital Seremban. Mm -hmm. So she able to get the medication posted to, to Kajang. Yes, uh, yes, that's also? what we call the SPUB system. Ah, it's been sent yes. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. So we also have locker for you depending on the hospital facility. So that you don't have to queue or wait, you just go to the locker and take your medicine. You can yes. also collect to the nearest facility. Am I right? Yes, yes. But depending uh -huh. whether that facility yes. offers that service. Yeah. Uh, and mm -hmm. we also like um, we also have like uh, KKM also provide like Mac McDonald facility, drive-through facility. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> That show how much I miss McDonald lah, kan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything, any question? Any more question from... Uh, saya, <coughs> saya nak cari, cari sikit. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay, uh, kau nak tanya, nak komen ni. Yeah. Bukan pandu laju je, uh, ni. Ini pas. Uh, uh, pandu lalu. <laughs> pandu lalu. <laughs> ah, tadi awak cakap pandu laju, maknanya lalu tu 800 km per hour, obat tu campak ada bertingkap. <laughs> <laughs> pandu lalu ya pandu lalu ah yeah. okay. ha, nak tanya sikit ni kalau lah saya ada penyakit corona lah, kecil manis ke darah tinggi pasal apa tadi aku kata orang yang lebih, lebih tua kan akan uh -huh. lebih 60 lebih senang dapat penyakit tu apa yeah. perkara yang saya perlu perhatikan perhatikan um, bahawa kemungkinan penyakit saya yeah. saya ada simptom seperti covid-19 ah uh, itulah prof sebab uh, Kalau mana-mana patient yang at that age group and ada uh, comorbid condition, pasti mereka pun akan terasa takut kan? Takut boleh terkena, senang terjangkit dengan penyakit ni. So, kalau you takut, all you need to do is uh, answer the question F from the uh, website and then dia akan guide you lah tengok uh, you ada risiko ke tak. Uh, macam mana, uh, what you should do, what's your next step of action. So langkah apa ni, social distancing and practicing good uh, apa ni, hygiene, clean hygiene is is very good to prevent you from getting um, uh, infected from this COVID-19. Terima kasih, Nis. So, uh, kita pun memang dah nampak eh, hasil usaha uh, frontliners, KKM with this PKP phase 1, 2, 3 and now we are entering phase 4. Um, we have uh, uh, successfully achieved the flattening of the curve which is which is very remarkable I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Michael. May I ask? Yeah, we kind of add the, the some of the maklumat lah. Actually, uh, we have National Pharmacy Call Centre. Ah, so, yes, yes. How you find this? Through this uh, COVID-19? Sorry, pun pun soalan ke untuk we saya ke? We have National Pharmacy Call Centre. Uh -huh. And we have hotline for this, which I think public can make use of this. Yes. So what is your opinion? Yes, I think uh, the hotline number is specifically for uh, COVID-19 cases and then uh, the hotline yang bagian farmasi uh, uh, berikan tu boleh specifically kepada ubat lah. Uh, kalau you ada uh, pertanyaan mengenai ubat-ubatan, you boleh call the pharmacy hotline and then kalau you punya, you ada pertanyaan mengenai COVID in, in general, you boleh call uh, the general hotline yang uh, saya kongsikan tadi. Okay, so ada, uh, saya tambahlah uh, message ya dekat dalam chat. There's a pharmacy hotline ya, Prof? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ah, uh, Pharmacy hotline. Pharmacy, uh, National Pharmacy Call Centre. Ah, uh, National Pharmacy Call Centre. Call Centre. Alright. The number is 1-800. Ah, uh, kejap Prof, kejap. <laughs> National Pharmacy Hot Centre. 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 Hot
call center. Call center. The, the, the hotline dia 1-800. Uh, 1-800. Ada tak? Line tak clear sangat. 1-800. 1-800. Ya. Yeah. 8-8. Ah, ya. Yeah, 8-8. 6722. 6722. Yes. Alright. Okay, I'll share it in chat. Okay. okay. So, I think there's one question. Ah, uh, Doctor, I'm, uh, okay. I, I saw one question. Oh, oh Andy. Ah, if Australia PhD are taking break from their study to help with different CTC, I'm not sure if we have that happening in Malaysia. Do you have any info on that? Especially on our website. Uh, at the book. At the moment, I don't have any information okay, on that. Um, um, I'm sorry, but uh, I think uh -huh. if you are a practicing pharmacist, um, you can. I, I'm not really sure whether you are allowed to, apa ni, to to continue your service if you're not in service. Kalau macam contohnya, you you stop your service because you sambung PhD, tapi. Um, you nak tolong balik. I don't have the exact information if you are allowed to do that in Malaysia. Mungkin Prof boleh, Prof Mansi. Okay. Uh, gini, uh, kalau uh, if, if the pharmacist is still registered, mm -hmm. right? Maksudnya dia registered anywhere, he can still uh, practice. But for me, from what I know now, they are also, uh, Mr. Health, Health is actually gathering volunteers. So if you are still a pharmacist, you can still volunteer to uh, to do this uh, to provide service in any of the centers in the KKM. They don't. I don't think they they prevent. But you must still be a pharmacist. You cannot if you are no longer a pharmacist. You cannot you cannot uh, volunteer. Because because we are dealing with drugs, right? To dispense, so you must be a registered pharmacist. Oh okay. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay. So any more any question? Any other question? Ada apa lagi? Okay, Assalamualaikum. I have a question. I'm Khurshida. Ah, alright. Okay. <laughs> okay, from uh, Dr. Anis. Uh, uh, just regarding the uh, comorbidity condition, if we compare from the uh, 60 years and above, so what is the dilemma with the patient? What they more affect the which type of the uh, system? So, meaning the mechanism of uh, COVID-19 infection with the disease uh, in terms of comorbidity condition, what type of diabetes or blood pressure patient they more affected, uh, affected uh, or what type of patient they uh, make more worse and uh, which lead them uh, to, to compromise on this uh, immunity system and uh, collapse the patient. So meaning the interaction of COVID-19 with the disease. Um, yes. Yes, because we are seeing a pattern where uh, patients yeah. with cardiovascular diseases and uh, patients with diabetes are, are, uh, are worse compared to patients without, without uh, this comorbid disease. They, they are still trying to uh, understand why this is happening, but several theories has, has come up because um, this COVID-19 uh, has this, um, this protein spike which uh, act on the receptor ACE2 which is present on your lungs and some parts mm. of the body so that's why um, these parts are, these patients are susceptible to worse outcome compared to other patients but the exact mechanism they are still trying to find out why why these patients is it because of their condition or is it because of uh, the medication so there's lots of theories going on yeah, because more uh, awareness, more knowledge we can spread up if, if we know about this thing to the population actually. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, any any more question? Rasa tak ada daya. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. So there is a um one uh pesanan eh, from the our secretariat. Mana ya, Nani? Uh, please fill in the Google form. We want to get the feedback on our webinar so that we can improve and um if the line not clear or whatever. 
uh, I hope that uh, all the participants for this webinar, I saw the uh, the highest um, registered uh, 104 this, uh, just now. I hope all of you can fill in the form. It's in the chat room, chat space. We already uh, shared it, uh, the link. Hopefully, you can fill it in. Okay, Nani. Okay, uh -uh. Nani? okay, tak ada. okay terima kasih. Ah. Kepada Dr. Hanis dengan Dr. Uh, Dr. Min, uh, pihak kami memohon maaf atas kekurangan mengendali program ini. Uh, akhir kata, uh, saya akhiri dengan majlis dengan wabillah taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih semua. Okay, okay. terima kasih. Thank you Dr. Hanis. Thank, Thank you to Prof. Yes, okay. Hope to see you all again in the next webinar. Assalamualaikum. Salam Ramadan. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.